with a degree in hand or even years of work experience, would you want to go back to college or do you need to go? Returning to college can be daunting, but it may be just the ticket to change your career, earn industry certification, or acquire new job skills. Stick around as we explore how Howard Community College provides learning that works for you. Welcome to Pathways. I'm Dr. Kate Hetherington. This show takes a closer look at Howard Community College and how community colleges provide pathways to success. When you think of college, you may think of recent high school graduates, but at community colleges, you can find students of every age. Why? Community colleges offer flexible scheduling and services. They serve the community, offering the degrees and the courses people need, no matter what their age. One example is Ryan Caffin, a successful businessman in his home country of Tunisia. He holds a degree in marketing and speaks seven languages. But when Ryan and his wife moved to the United States, he realized even with all of his skills, he needed to earn additional certifications in order to stay competitive. With the encouragement of his son, Ryan returned to college after a 30-year absence. In that time, my son was a Howard Community College student, and uh, he was pushing me. Dad, why you don't go uh, uh, get some courses there? Well, Ryan uh, came to my office to figure out a good career path for him that would work with a work schedule and being able to go to school. We sat down and went through our different program options, and I knew that he wanted to be front of the house and our food and beverage program seemed like it might be a great fit. And I never thought that one day I would be back to school. It was so hard for me. The hospitality management certification was the perfect fit for him, a working adult student who already had significant work experience. He has an interest in food and beverage operations, but he has an interest in a, in a hotel environment. So now this is helping him to understand how all the departments in a hotel relate to one another. There are so many things that I didn't know before. The hospitality management courses provide classroom experience and opportunities to learn in the field. But it works fabulous for adult learners, for those who are already currently in industry that want to be able to have the certification, uh, a promotion opportunity in their job, as well, of course, just their own personal goals for something they've always wanted to do. When I sent my resume to my job here, and they was looking for someone who can handle uh, the work. He started with us a little over a year ago. He started, applied for a host position. Uh, we hired him, did a fantastic job for us. And when a supervisor role opened up, he applied for that and we promoted him. With his schoolwork, he brings it in all the time. Anytime he learns a new presentation or a recipe or um, something he learned in his class, he always brings it to the table, and it's really neat. Ryan is completing his certifications in lodging, event, and food and beverage management at Howard Community College. But Ryan is only one of our stories. Joining us now to share more about the adult student experience is recent alumnus Eli Younger. Eli, we just watched Ryan share his story. How do you relate to his experience at HCC? Look more of as a, like a role model because of his adult presence um, in class. Um, I definitely relate to that because of being a music major um, throughout our theory classes. The uh, teacher would probably give some of the students advice on what they need to prepare for in life, and he would probably look over to me say, I am no. Is that true, Eli? That's exactly. You know, life experiences, um, life advice, um, along with uh, what we need to do, you know, as far as assignments and stuff and working together. I imagine it was um, a little bit strange in the beginning when you first entered the classroom, but then after that you got acclimated to yes, it? Yes, <laughs> yes it was. It was very strange and uh, didn't think I was cut out for it at first because it was moving very fast. I started in January 2012. I took summer classes every summer so I can just keep it going. The next thing you know, I was walking the stage and now I'm furthering my 
you know, pursuit at uh, UMBC. Yeah, well, that's a great story. Thanks for sharing that with us. Thank you. Howard Community College offers many programs to meet the needs of students and also a broad range of services. Joining us to tell us more is Associate Vice President of Enrollment Services, Allison Buckley. So Allison from Eli and Ryan Stories, it's clear that the adult student experience is different from that of the traditional age student. So what does that mean for student services and also what does that mean from an admissions perspective? From a student services and admissions perspective, it really is about meeting students where they are. So for example, a number of our students haven't ever been to college before. And for them, it is really about navigating those first steps, how to apply to college, how to apply for financial aid, and really mitigate any of that anxiety that comes up about returning to the classroom, whether it's 25 years or 30 years. And then we have a lot of adult students who've been to college before. They may even have a college degree and they're coming back for a new credential or to completely switch careers. For those students, they usually start with um, a large concern, how do I get credit for my prior learning? Uh, do my military credits transfer? do my credits from another institution. So in our advising staff, we have a team that will work with them to make sure that they don't have to take classes they don't need. We're transferring in credits, and they get credit for that past work so that they can move through quickly, as Eli said, and reach, and reach the finish line. Now, um, we have our, the number of veterans at the college continues to grow, and uh, we have a whole um, department within student services dedicated to our, our military. Um, how do you work with students who are currently serving in the military or are veterans? We do it in a number of ways and we have several staff members who are dedicated to supporting that important student population. So we have our VA certifying official whose primary goal is to help veteran and military students navigate what can be a pretty complex landscape of educational benefits. We also, in advising, have an academic advisor who's dedicated to our military and veteran students. Um, she was in the military herself and really brings that perspective of making that transition from the military into an educational environment. And I think she really understands what our students are going through. And the college has received the designation as a military-friendly college. What's the, what does that exactly mean? I think it is a testament to our dedication to support this, this segment of our population. Now, Eli, you, you've come to the college as an adult student, but you've also come to the college as a veteran. And yes. tell us a little bit about what that experience was like for you. The veteran system here at the service center is, um, has done an awesome job making sure all my GI Bill and everything was all certified and everything, so I didn't have to worry about going back and forth to the cashier's cage with my class. Well, I would be able to take this class um, because this hasn't been paid yet. Um, they did an awesome, they had an awesome job, so I wouldn't have to tear, take care, of, worry about that, so I can focus more on you know taking my classes. Mm -hmm. The Veterans Service uh, Organization, and um, with them asking, voicing their pains and their concerns and stuff. The school um, really listened, and um, they have a new lounge and everything um, dedicated to the veterans, which I thought that was very awesome. And um, the the um, the task, the red, white, and blue task well, for graduate, that's that was phenomenal. Yeah, that was a nice touch. That was a very nice touch. And yeah, yeah. I know for a fact I can speak on behalf of every veteran here at this campus. They are going to enjoy it when they walk. Across yeah, the stage. that was a great thing last year. You talked about being an adult student coming back to college in the classroom. What's it like outside of the classroom? What are the challenges that you face balancing your family life, your work life, your children, your grandchildren? You got a lot going on. How, do, how do you do all that? It's, 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 uh, it's challenging. You know, I think I could do is just try not to get too overwhelmed. Try to balance as much as I can. Um, spend time with my daughters, spend time with my wife, do the daddy duties, the hubby duties, and get those assignments turned in on time. <laughs> well, that's, that's great advice for all students. Yeah. 
Allison, um, even with students who may be working full time or have a spouse that's employed, I'm sure that the cost of college worries many, many students. Can you talk about what options are available regarding paying for college? I think that is uh, a real worry for our adult student population and our financial aid counselors meet with students and they really are experts at identifying those ways to pay for college. We're very fortunate this year through the support of our county executive Ken Ullman and the Howard County Council, they provided additional funding to the college in the Pathway Scholarship. Um, and part of that we have set aside to help students who are returning to, to college as adult learners and it really is just a tremendous benefit so that cost is not a barrier that would prevent someone from going back to school and pursuing their educational goals. Yes, we were very fortunate to receive that funding. It's had an enormous impact on uh, students who are financially needy and Howard County residents. So thanks for that information. And thank you, Eli, for sharing your story. It's uh, good to see you again. The last time I saw you, you were playing the Star Spangled Banner at <laughs> last year's commencement, and you did a terrific job. And thank now you. you're at UMBC yes. and continuing with uh, your dream. Yes. Uh, so congratulations thank on that. Thank you very much. Coming up next, we'll learn more about the Pathway Scholarship Program and how it's helping students afford their education. Learning at home. Learning in the classroom. Learning for success. For learning that works for you, choose Howard Community College. To find courses and programs that fit your schedule and learning style, visit hcclearningworks.com. You can get there from here. Thanks to the generosity of Howard County Executive Ken Ullman and the County Council, Howard County residents now have a new and innovative scholarship program that will help them along their pathway to success. I am so glad that the county decided to do it and that they've been able to help students like me. The Pathway Scholarship is a brand new need-based scholarship program. The county granted two and a half million dollars to HCC. Two and a half million dollars came from a uh, surplus that we had in last year's budget. I think the scholarship program is needed to specifically help our Howard County residents. Those students who are just in need of a little additional income or additional funding to help support their higher education goals. The Pathway Scholarship is designed to serve a wide range of students, including recent high school graduates, adult learners, students close to completing their degree, and veterans. Anyone who lives in Howard County who wants to change careers, who wants to seek a degree in a number of fields that we have high need for employment will benefit because they're going to be able to actually do it. So I've been able to volunteer in pediatric offices and the hospital, so that has helped me to, you know, get more experience in where I want to get into versus having to be so stressed with having to balance work and school. Applying for the scholarship is as simple as filling out the federal financial aid form. A student does not have to specifically ask for this scholarship. There is no separate application form. The scholarship is basically awarded to the students as a, port, a part of their overall financial aid package. And once that package goes toward their entire bill to the, to the college, any remaining, they can use that to help with their books, or they may be able to receive some additional funding and a refund once everything has been taken care of to help with some of their living expenses as well. The awards range from $600 to $1,200 a year. That can make the difference between a student being able to get their AA degree, to take more credits, to maybe give up that part-time job that's keeping them from being able to take a, a more full uh, course load. I think everyone benefits. I think the employers benefit because we will be providing um, people in the labor force that are trained in degrees and certificate programs in high need areas such as healthcare. Knowing how much it's blessed me and it's benefited me, I know that there are a lot of other people in my same situation that maybe aren't going back to school because they don't have the means to, but they would love to, you know, have the opportunity. So this is giving someone like me the opportunity to do it. So I'm just very thankful.
If you'd like to learn more about the Pathway Scholarship Program, go to howardcc.edu slash pathwayscholarship. As part of the Pathway Scholarship Program, the college and the county want to get the community involved in supporting this initiative. The college has launched a matching campaign to grow the county's investment in HCC students from $2.5 million to $3 million. To support the Pathway Scholarship, visit howardcc.edu slash pathway match. One of the many award-winning academic programs at the college is the Center for Hospitality and Culinary Studies. The center offers students high quality courses taught by leading industry professionals and real life experiences that are important if you want to get a job in the industry. The hospitality management program is accredited by the Accreditation Commission for Programs in Hospitality Administration. The culinary management program is accredited by the American Culinary Federation. These accreditations promise to our students that we offer a high level of professionalism and the latest established industry standards and practices. Let's join Chair Vinny Reggae for a tour of the center. Hello, my name is Vinny Reggae and I'm the Chair for Hospitality and Culinary Studies at Howard Community College. Uh, we are truly an award-winning program and you can see all these awards in the display cabinet behind me. Uh, it is truly my pleasure to give you the tour of our facility. One of uh, the concentrations that we have within our culinary program is professional cooking. So right now we are in a professional cooking kitchen where students are actually engaging in activities that deals with international cuisine. So let's hear from students as to what this course is all about and their experience with the program. Hey, Anjali, how are you? Hello, fine, thank you. Uh, so you? tell us about your experience with the program. Well, in general, I think um, I've learned a lot about the, the foundational basics of, of cooking, like how to properly chop an onion, how to make chicken stock, um, things that I'll take with me throughout my entire culinary career. And uh, you just finished with your internship with the Congressional Country Club. Uh, so tell us about that. It was wonderful, actually. Uh, Congressional Country Club was recently voted the number one country club in America. So I got to work um, under Chef Joe Piazza and, and all of the other chefs there at Congressional. Um, it was wonderful to be exposed to, to their specific um, cooking styles. And it was also really great to be in, a, in such a large um, and prolific organization uh, and learn about the business of cooking. So now let's hear from the chef instructor of this class, Chef Moore. Chef Moore? Hi, Dr. Welcome. Reggae. Thank you very much. So tell us like, about your credentials and what you bring to the table and just in general about this course. Oh, uh, I'm Chef Todd Moore. I'm a certified culinary educator with the American Culinary Federation and I live to teach. I mean, I just really love doing it. This course especially, this is such a fantastic course. It's international cuisines. So what we do is every week we examine a different country or a different region from all over the world and it goes into the history of the country. Who conquered these people and what foods did they bring? Who did they then leave with their foods and go back to their homeland? Maybe there are religious aspects to food. How about the geography of food? If you live in the mountains, you don't have a lot of fish. If you live in a fertile plateau, you might be grazing cattle. So the students really get an opportunity to learn that American cooking and French cooking is not the only cooking done in the world and why people eat what they do and how they cook it and the history of, of how this is accomplished. That's great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So as you can see, almost 90% of our coursework is completely hands-on and uh, this is exactly what happens not only on the culinary side but also in baking and pastry side. So let's head to uh, Baking and Pastries Kitchen and we'll actually get a chance to speak with uh, one of the Baking and Pastry students and the chef instructor there. As spoken with you, uh, we have one of the best facilities when it comes to hospitality and culinary education. Right now we are in Baking and Pastries Kitchen which is state of the art. And uh, I'm here with uh, Ms. Story, who is a student, and Chef Hogg. Uh, the course that's going on right now is Introduction to Baking and Pastries. So let's find out about their impression about uh, the program and the course. So Ms. Story. Yes. So talk to us about your experience with the program. Hi, I love this program. My daughter started um, two years ago, and she has convinced me to do this. So, and I want to learn how to bake and cook better. Uh, Chef Hogg. So talk to us about your uh, background uh, and, and what this uh, course is all about. Okay, I'm uh, uh, born and raised in Switzerland. Uh, I went to school there for baking pastry and the culinary side. This program, uh, like it says, baking and pastry uh, basics. It's really the basics what we learn here and 
where everything after that is built on. So uh, I know you have had a lot of experience working in professional uh, baking and pastries mm -hmm. kitchens. Uh, where does this kitchen rank as opposed to all the professional kitchens that you uh, have worked in the past in the hotels or the restaurants? Um, we have good lighting in here. That's a, a major part. Um, we have all modern equipment. We have tempering machines for chocolate. We have molds available, ice cream makers. Um, this is what you normally don't have, a perfect um, setting to learn things. Okay, thank you so much. In addition to this, we also have uh, uh, four classrooms uh, that are attached to not only kitchens, uh, but uh, they're also like used for lecturing activities. So let's take a look at our, our lecture classrooms. So now we are here in ACFA Accredited Hospitality Management Program. Uh, so there are three concentrations in hospitality management, namely uh, food and beverage management, lodging management, and event management. So uh, the kind of class that's running right now in this classroom uh, is uh, introduction to uh, lodging industry. And uh, also like just one thing I wanted to let you know about this classroom, which is this classroom also serves as our student-run restaurant. Uh, so this sort of like is a multi-purpose classroom that we have. Uh, what I'm going to do now is like I'm going to uh, chat with Alice, uh, who is one of the lodging students, and uh, uh, understand what her impression of the program is. So Alice, uh, tell us about uh, your experience with the program so far. The classes that I've taken and the program is really amazing. Specifically this class, it had helped me with my internship and also with the where I work as a, in a hotel. Okay, uh, you spoke about the internship. I know you just finished with your internship at Candlewood Hotels. I called the hotel and talked to the general manager who was excited to have an intern at the hotel. They practice what I learned in class, mostly and the opera system that I learned with Miss Jordy is what the hotel uses for checking in guests and checking out guests. So I was excited to see what I learned in class helped me to do my job. And at the end of the internship, the general manager offered me a position as a front desk agent. Oh, that's great. That's great. Uh, tell us, like, all the classes that you have taken. Speak to us about the instructors, the teaching methods that they used. What exactly did you like? Most of the, the three instructors that I have, so they told me this is, the program is not about like testing you and quizzing you all the time. It's about teaching you and bringing the experience they had. Uh, so you, since you spoke about the instructors, uh, Ms. Fisher, who is right here, uh, let's actually chat with her too. How are you, Jody? I'm good. Hi. So uh, tell us about uh, your experience, your credentials, what you have done in the industry before you got into academia. Uh, so just talk to us about yourself a bit. Well, I was in the lodging industry for about 20 years. And like Alice, I started out at the front desk and worked in both operations and sales and marketing. And at one point in my career towards the end, I was at the corporate offices of the hotel and I was the corporate sales uh, and marketing director overseeing about 14 hotels, six different brands. Talk to us about the certifications that you have received uh, in academia and, and also in the industry. All right, uh, I've received my certified hotel administrator as well as my certified hospitality educator, which has really uh, been great here in the classroom. Jody also uh, mentioned that uh, along with culinary side, our hospitality program as well is extremely hands-on. Uh, our, our students actually get a chance to visit uh, different hotels, uh, network with different uh, uh, industry leaders. Uh, and internship also is another critical component, not only in the hospitality side, but also on the culinary side. Uh, so what we are going to do now is uh, we are going to head out and uh, be outdoors and uh, visit uh, our, our culinary herb garden that our students maintain, that is used not only by the hospitality students, but also our culinary students in the kitchen. As a program, we always keep an eye on recent industry trends and uh, uh, what's exactly happening in the industry. Uh, and one of uh, the main things that uh, one gets to see in different hotels and restaurants nowadays is sustainability practices. Uh, so in order to uh, uh, teach students as to what the sustainability practices are, uh, we have developed our own culinary and herb garden. This is where students come and grow their own herbs. In addition to that, students also grow different vegetables such as squash and tomatoes that you actually get to see right behind me. Again, thank you so much for visiting us and we look forward to hearing from you. To supplement the classroom instruction, students work at area events, compete in culinary competitions, and participate in internships to gain valuable work experience. When we come back from the break, we'll explore the Charles Ecker Business Training Center, Howard County's prime source for business training and consulting, plus a look at what's happening on campus in the coming months. 
Learning at home. Learning in the classroom. Learning for success. For learning that works for you, choose Howard Community College. To find courses and programs that fit your schedule and learning style, visit hcclearningworks.com. You can get there from here. The Charles Ecker Business Training Center is celebrating its 20th anniversary. This state-of-the-art facility is conveniently located in the Baltimore-Washington corridor, just seconds off of I-95 and Route 175. From its humble beginnings in the 1990s, it has grown into a vital part of the business community. The Business Training Center was created in the early 90s as a result of our county executive at the time, Charles Ecker, and our president, Dwight Burrell, recognizing the importance of workforce development to the economic growth of Howard County. We know that HCC's main mission is workforce development, and we're all focused on that. But there's many training needs that don't fit the regular schedule of classes. There's short-term training needs, there's professional development, there's uh, training needed for people who are unemployed in very specific areas, and there's people who are already employed wanting to enhance their skills in technical areas or in other professional areas. So the Business Training Center focuses on those more customized needs as well as technical training. Most of our courses are offered in the open enrollment format, but any one of those can be tweaked and redesigned for a client, but we can also start from scratch and do customized training. I'm coming to the college with a specific need. I'm expecting you to respond to the specific need. And you, as a college, are kind of distinguishing yourselves from other providers because you're saying, we're going to bend over backwards to meet your needs. We do know good instructional design. And we would bring an instructional designer to meet with a subject matter expert. And they would decide on the objectives of the course, decide how long it's going to take, and then proceed to develop the content and we've done that hundreds of times. The Business Training Center has built an excellent reputation for designing and delivering customized training. You can't do sort of the one size fits all or we're just gonna do you know, commercial off the shelf training because if I use an example that's not relevant to those adults, they'll be like, that doesn't happen and they get turned off. And people want to say, if I gave up eight hours of work or four hours of work, I'm going back to a lot of work because nobody did my work when I was in training this better be worth it. We're very flexible with delivering the training. People like to come to our Gateway Campus because it's a good training facility and they feel comfortable and they're away from work. Our trainers have in common the fact that they come from the business world. They bring to the classroom real world experience, practical experience. The, the Business Training Center really fills a void that uh, we had experienced for many years in that it gives the business community their own place for training. They're able to uh, use the space for meetings, they're able to use the space for proprietary needs, but they're also able to call upon us to help them grow their workforce. And in the end, the bottom line is the more successful their workforce is, the more successful the business is going to be. So you certainly have results for your business, and I always think of this as kind of three nesting boxes. So at the big area there are what does this business need to do? And then what does this department or this group, how they need to perform? And so on an individual level, what is it that I need to do that enables our team to perform, that enables us to achieve the business results? So we're always tying it back to what are the results? What will be different because of this training? Businesses don't just come here for quality training. They come here for a quality training environment. So we are a full service center and we can provide all kinds of solutions to their training needs. For more information, call 443-518-1660. Congratulations to the Business Training Center for 20 successful years of serving our community. Now let's look at what's happening around campus. The HCC Theater Department is pleased to present two of Christopher Durang's one-act plays, For Whom the Bell Tolls and Denity Crisis. Directed by Grace Anastasiades, these two plays run from November 6th through the 9th. 
This year's International Film Festival is bringing highly acclaimed and thought-provoking films from around the globe to campus for the four-day festival. The film festival takes place November 10th through the 14th. Later in the month, be sure to catch the talented musicians who make up the award-winning Gemini Piano Trio. They are one of the few professional family chamber groups on the concert circuit today. Join them Saturday, November 22nd at 7.30 p.m. December is the season of student performances and exhibitions. Don't miss the HCC Fall Student Invitational Exhibition taking place in the Rouse Company Foundation Gallery and the Studies Abroad Photos and Paintings in the Art Department Gallery. The Music Department presents the Student Spotlight Concert December 8th at 7.30 p.m. Arts Collective presents the favorite heartwarming holiday classic, It's a Wonderful Life. Join the cast and help Clarence get his wings. The show runs December 4th through the 14th of December. Rep Stage will present the Baltimore, D.C. premiere of The Whale. Written by Samuel D. Hunter and directed by Casey Campbell, it tells the story of a morbidly obese man and his last chance for redemption. The show runs January 14th through February 1st. Well, that wraps up this edition of Pathways. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>